Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be talking about current events. Uh, there was something that took place just before Christmas, and I think we need to talk about that a little bit. So I meant to do, I was going to do a video on security practices for Linux in 2025 today, but there was some things that happened. So I want to incorporate those things that happened and then talk about some of the more advanced uh, threats and uh, some of the things that we need to talk about for 2025. In 2025, the landscape of cybersecurity is more complex than ever. From advanced malware to the exploitation of trusted tools, securing your Linux desktop requires vigilance, knowledge, and action. In this video, we'll go beyond the basics and focus on the real threats and cutting-edge practices you need to know. We all know the basics, but they're worth a quick mention. Use strong passwords and a password manager. Limit user privileges to what's necessary and regularly review accounts. Enable automatic updates, especially for critical kernel patches, and encrypt your drives. Configure a robust firewall like UFW. Monitor open ports and only install software from trusted sources. With those covered, let's dive into the more pressing issues for 2025. The two things that have been increasing in frequency is uh, browser uh, plugin attacks and supply chain attacks. Those are both becoming very, very common We've uh, in, the, in the past year, and I suspect it'll just become worse over time if, as long as they're successful at it. Browser plugins have been a critical attack vector, uh, and hackers are doing two things. One, they're buying the rights to these popular plugins. Now, they're, they're being picky about which ones they choose. They want the ones that have your password in them, that, that, that manage your passwords, for example. Then they push uh, malicious updates into those uh, into those plugins, and they exploit the trust that you place in those tools by allowing them to copy off your your cookies and being able to do middle man in the middle attacks. In December 2024, a significant cybersecurity incident involved hackers compromising legitimate Chrome browser extensions to steal user data, notably Cyberhaven, a data protection company, reported that its Chrome extension was hijacked on December 24, 2024. The attackers introduced malicious code designed to exfiltrate user data, including cookies and authenticated sessions, potentially allowing unauthorized access to user accounts. This breach was part of a broader campaign affecting multiple extensions, including those related to artificial intelligence and virtual private networks. I mean, you could listen to the news and they're probably playing chicken little. Oh, my God, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. But, you know, in reality, I think we need to approach these kinds of problems calmly and pragmatically. Users of compromised extensions were advised to uninstall them, reset account passwords, clear browser data, and reset browser settings to their original defaults before installing safe versions, if available. This incident underscores the importance of vigilance regarding browser extensions. Regularly reviewing installed extensions, monitoring for unusual behavior, and staying informed through cybersecurity alerting websites are crucial steps in maintaining security. The first thing you'll want to do is maybe go research the developer of the plugin that you're using. And you might be, now remember, this has only affected Chrome. But the other thing, the other half of Chrome that you have to worry about is extension also run on Brave. Does it also run on, on uh, Microsoft Edge? Does it also run on Chromium? I mean, those things, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, typically, now there are some nuances that you run into between operating systems, but typically... Extensions are free of changes in the operating system because they they operate within the environment of the browser. 
So it, typically they're, ja, ja, they're JavaScript or HTML and CSS So in, in order for them to work. I would research and see if the developers uh, have identified the exploit as being in included in their extension and they know what the code looks like. You might use ex uh, tools like Extension Manager to take a look at uh, to see if uh, your your particular plugin is uh, exposed. Look at some of the other sites other than the mass than the mainstream media. Initially, on the 24th of December, when this was reported, they were only saying, "Well, there's five. It looks like there's five extensions that are affected." As of yesterday. 35 have been identified. So I don't think we're done. I think that number may climb as we go through the next couple of weeks as security researchers get through the entire list of extensions that are available for Chrome. So, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but just know that the, it, this can, these extensions that have been affected contain malicious code, which is designed to exfiltrate your data including your cookies, including your authenticated session information, and potentially allows unauthorized access to your accounts. Supply chain attacks are another growing threat. Malicious actors compromise libraries and dependencies used in everyday software. Always verify sources, use tools like SigStore, for secure software provenance and stay alert to advisories from your distribution maintainers. AI isn't just a defensive tool. Attackers are using it to create deepfake phishing attacks, automate vulnerability discovery, and even develop AI-driven malware. To counter this, adopt AI-powered defensive tools and educate yourself on recognizing synthetic threats. Today and zero-click exploits are on the rise. We've, uh, and those have been around for, gosh, almost a decade now, I think. Yeah, almost a decade. The, the zero-click ones have been around. Uh, so messaging and communication apps are pretty common targets. So if you're using like some messaging app or a communication app like SSH even, uh, be careful of where you go with it because you could be a target of those particular uh, attacks. You can isolate yourself from those using Fire Jail. If you're on FreeBSD or OpenBSD, Jails will help protect you as well. And make sure you limit the per permissions of what they can do. It's protecting the resources of your computer, your desk, your memory, your and other other software that's running from the application that you're currently uh, receiving data in and out from the internet. The other one is uh, firmware attacks. Uh, those are on the rise as well, and those target your UEFI or BIOS. We've covered a lot of ground today. This is kind of, I mean, I'm trying to make this video for a lot of different people. I'm not trying to make this so that it's hard for anyone to just understand. But there is a lot of, there is a lot of details here in this particular case. We just don't have all the answers yet. And I, like I said, I suspect there will, there is a list, the known extensions to avoid I don't know if they have been turned off already or, or thrown out of the store or what. But, uh, yeah, there's, like I said, as of yesterday, there was 35. But today, who knows, there could be another 35 that they find. There could be another five. But I'd say that give it a couple of weeks, and I think we'll have a complete picture of how many of them have been impacted. Anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below. If there's any subject areas you'd like me to expand on, I'd be happy to do that. Hope to see you soon, and bye for now.